now time for the children and the adults are welcome to listen. <laughs>
one of the greeters that I might have been sharing, I don't know, quite a bit, but she, I came in, she gave me a big smile and gave me a poke. <gasps> but I knew all about it because I'd been to this experience. So anyway, I told the lady, no, I didn't want to poke, and so she smiled, and I smiled, and we just stood there. <laughs> and then after a while, I said, I mean, there was too much for me just to pick up and carry. I said, well, can I have a bag? And she looked at me kind of funny, and she put stuff in a bag, and me, and we walked out, and my friend, he was kind of smirking behind me, you know how he <laughs> So we got off, and I said, why are you laughing? And he just broke down laughing. And you know what he said? He said the same. He said, never buy a pig in a poke. What was that about? <laughs> he was just laughing away, and he said, you know, a poke is a bag. <laughs> just like they give it when you have a newcomer coming. The reader gave me a poke. A poke is a bag. And so when she asked me, do you want a poke? I said, no, but then a minute later, I said, give me a bag. <laughs> so I got her confused in it, and here, I thought I knew English, that humbled me. <laughs> well, that happened a while ago, but more recently, we have our family here visiting us. You remember Ethan in Sabbath School? He's from Maryland. And do you remember my other two grandkids? Mm -hmm. What's their name? Hey. Haley and Charlie. And what did they speak? English accent, didn't they? They speak the Queen's English. Well, my daughter moved over there quite a while ago, and I thought I knew all about that. You know, if you order chips, what do you get? You don't get potato chips. You get french fries. And you don't ride on the subway. You ride on the tube or the underground. And, well, there's just a whole bunch. I mean, your car has a, a bonnet, and, and, uh, and not, it doesn't have a trunk. It has a boot. I mean, uh, just all kinds of different things that they do. Well, a couple weeks ago, we were at lunch, and our daughter at Haven and Clyde were sitting at one end of the table, along with our son Chris and daughter-in-law Freddie, and then my wife's sister and brother-in-law, and then they, we had a niece there, and we had a cousin of hers, Ed and Jan, and then the children were sitting, and we were at the other end, and that's a lot of people at the, at the table. And of course, we had to ask politely for the food to be passed, and then everybody did, and they were doing well. But you know what, Charlie, he doesn't like a lot of things. A lot of food, you know, he's got a particular appetite. You know, he doesn't like things. I know you you girls, I'm sure, every time your mother makes, you know, Brussels sprouts or anything, you just, oh, great, great, right? right? Seaweed, all that kind of stuff. You're happy to eat all that stuff, aren't you? Well. Charlie doesn't like it. Said, and sometimes desserts he doesn't. Some desserts he doesn't like. He likes other things. Well, we had spaghetti, and he likes spaghetti. Although he doesn't put tomato sauce on it. I don't know why, but he likes spaghetti. And after everyone was eating, my, my wife was passing around a plate of homemade chocolate chip cookies. Doesn't that sound good? Homemade chocolate cookies. But he had asked for a second helping of his spaghetti, so he was still eating his spaghetti. Well, the plate of chocolate chip cookies went around, and it happened to end up in front of me. That was good, wasn't it? All these chocolate chip cookies in front of me. Well, Charlie finished his spaghetti. And then you know what? He asked very politely, Grandpa, can I have some pudding? Oh. What? We have chocolate chip cookies here, and he wants pudding? <laughs> I said, no, you can have cookies. And he got really kind of upset. But Grandpa, I want a biscuit with my pudding. Now, not only does he not want cookies, he wants biscuits to eat with his pudding. Well, I was getting upset. I was just about ready to tell him that you can't have any dessert and you have to go to your room. But I looked down to end the table and apparently my son had been telling a joke or something because Charlie's parents were kind of smirking too, kind of laughing and laughing, and they almost fell out of their chairs laughing. <laughs> what was going on? So, and then Charlie said, my mummy, now remember in England they're mummies, M-U-M-M-Y, not M-O-M-M-Y, mummy. My mummy said, if I eat my food, I could have pudding. And I looked at her, and in between laughs, she said, well, pudding is dessert. 
and biscuits are cookies. I said, well, I offered him a cookie. Yes, he said, no. Cookies are kind of like bland tasting graham crackers. In England, they're used if you have an upset stomach. And they're also called digestives. So Charlie didn't want that kind of cookie. He wanted his biscuit. Okay, I don't know if they even had biscuits there, but so I got humiliated, I guess, again, in humility because I gave Charlie, passed Charlie his biscuit cookie for his pudding dessert. <laughs> well, so I learned a lot. But then that's not the end of it. I wish I could say that. That's even good. It might even to be even humbler. Last Sabbath, I told you I could talk to the lady, and she talked about she needed to go humble, and I guess maybe I thought I was already humble. But the Lord knew that I wasn't. The next Monday, two days later, we went out to eat with Colleen, my wife's sister, and brother-in-law, because they were leaving for California the next day. So we went to this restaurant, very nice restaurant, sat down, and the waitress came by, and she said, would you like to drink? We all said, water. So she bought us nice water with lemon and had our menus and she's there talking about the menu. And I don't know how it happened. I was holding my menu and I must have done something the menu, but I knocked over my glass of water and it went all over the table. How embarrassing. Oh, but the waitress was very nice. She got some towels and they sopped up the water and that. Okay, and then she was nice enough to give me another glass of water. We gave our order, she took the menu. So I was we sitting there talking, and I was a little thirsty. I needed another drink. So I reached out to get my water. Now, you don't believe this, but it did happen. I knocked the water all over the table. Even the people sitting at tables next to us offered their napkins. <laughs> Fortunately, our waitress was gone, and I quickly got up and went and found another waiter, and he gave me some paper towels, and we sopped it off. Well, a little bit later, the waitress came with her food, and you know what? She saw my glass of water was empty, and she poured me a new glass of water. But you know what my wife did in that? She took my glass of water and moved it way away. And she said, now people we won't have to be worried about going out to eat with me because when we order water, she's going to have the waitress put the lid and <laughs> So anyway, that was very embarrassing. Very humbling. So we know that the Lord will work with us. And that we need to walk humbly with him. And that is what he was for us. So we bow our heads for prayer to Jesus. We ask you to continue with us as a blessed, to give us meekness and humility that we can be like these little children that are already meek and humble.